Now, a couple of hours ago, the German government finally confirmed that it will send tanks to Ukraine, as well as training, logistics and ammunition. It follows weeks of prevarication and pressure from allies. Berlin has also granted approval for other European countries to send German-made tanks from their own stocks to Ukraine. But Russia says the decision is extremely dangerous and blatant provocation and would escalate the conflict to a new level. Conservative MP Bob Seeley is a member of the Commons Foreign Affairs Committee and also a former army captain. Um, Bob, welcome to the programme. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, uh, This is something uh, you've long been calling for. Can you explain what will actually happen and the difference these tanks will make? I mean, are they, is it a gesture or or is it actually essential hardware in terms of 14 tanks, I think it is, that Germany is offering? Um, it, it's more than a gesture because actually it's not so much um, that the Germans providing tanks themselves, but they want to now allow other people to donate, to give, um, to hand over Leopard tanks to the Ukrainians. So the total number of tanks, Leopard tanks, that the Ukrainians will receive will probably be in excess of 100. And maybe if you include the 14 British challengers, and potentially U.S. tanks as well, maybe nearer 200, which is close to the number that they say they need. So this is potentially a game changer, and it shows an understanding amongst major NATO partners that the Ukrainians need to execute and win this war this year, and that is probably the least dangerous option for everybody. Uh, The Russian announcement won't have come as a surprise uh, for you. As I said in the introduction, they Mm. said the decision is extremely dangerous and and blatant provocation and talked about escalation. Uh, Is that the reason that it's taken Germany so long to come to this decision? I think there is a nervousness about increasing levels of support for sure and that we should take that nervousness, that we should at all times be absolutely aware of the risks that we are taking because this is a very, very dangerous situation and anyone who says otherwise uh, is, is, is simply wrong. Uh, I just think the least dangerous course of action, the least terrible course of action for everybody is to now to give the Ukrainians the tools to finish the job because if we do not, this war is going to go on for one, two, three more years and we simply don't know what a fully fascist Russia would look like, for example, in two years' time. Uh, And it may be that the situation will be even worse than it is at the moment. So there are risks involved. This is an escalation. It increases the risks of the Russians reacting dangerously and aggressively towards us and others and indeed Ukraine. But despite that, it is the least bad option, I think. Is there an argument, though, to say, um, or at least a question, whether we should be sending more and more armaments. Um, Are you worried that that Ukraine is now becoming a sort of receptacle for arms from all over the world, primarily, of course, NATO members? I know your colleague, Tobias Elwood, Conservative Chair of the Defence Select Committee, said today he'd prefer Western allies to build a weapons manufacturing factory or facility in Poland, which would simplify the supply of arms to the Ukrainians. But is there a question about whether flooding Ukraine with weapons is, in fact, in some way, an act of escalation? Well, yes, but when you say flooding Ukraine with weapons, you you make it sound like we are sort of deliberately trying to heat up a situation. Let's remember the Russians invaded Ukraine. The Russians obviously have been at conflict in Ukraine since 2005, but certainly since 2014. And Ukraine has a right to defend itself. And we have the right to allow and support Ukraine to defend itself. So we're not, I, I, I mean... Yes, the Russians will interpret this as an escalatory gesture, um, and if people want to see it as that, they can. But it is also giving the Ukrainians the right to defend themselves, and arguably it is allowing the Ukrainians to make to deliver battlefield victory that will bring this war to an end. And the only way this... I think there's some magical thinking really going on in the West that we want the Ukrainians to win, but somehow we think that means the Russians don't lose. If the Ukrainians are to win this war and to bring this horrible, disastrous war to an end, they have to defeat the Russians on the battlefield. And anything apart from that is magical thinking. Um, just well, not quite finally. Cause I've got one more question for you. But but but, yeah. did you think that the fact that um, that Olaf Scholz was sort of widely maligned in a way uh, for not making this decision earlier? Do you think that that was fair? Yeah. Do you understand why Germany had reservations? 
I, under, I mean, I'm half German. I understand the German history here. I understand German nervousness. Um, you can under, you can, you can explain away so much of German policy towards Russia in the last ten years, due to to understandable war guilt and World War II shame. You can also probably much more accurately say that the Germans have made a series of very bad strategic errors in regarding their relationship with Russia, building Nord Stream two. Uh, the gas pipeline, becoming increasingly dependent on Russian gas, believing that the way that they improve and develop and deepen their relationship with Russia is to become increasingly dependent on it. All these things, with the use of hindsight, made more, Russia more confident that the West would not act if it invaded Ukraine. So one of the key reasons that Russia invaded Ukraine was because of Germany's failed Russia policy, its failed Eastern policy. So uh, I have some sympathy with the Germans, but actually uh, their behavior um, and the fact that they've often put their business needs beyond the geopolitics and the defense interests of their friends and colleagues in Eastern Europe, I think has been a, a real source of shame, I'm afraid, for modern Germany. And I speak as someone who is you know, very fond of it. But it's, uh, I would not be proud of, uh, of being a German right now.